My name is Daniel Pan from the University of Leicester in the UK. I would like to present the case of an 85-year-old Gurdjieffi lady who presented to our hospital with left-sided weakness, confusion and slurred speech. She had a background of chronic migraine and hypertension. On clinical examination, she had a left-sided weakness and also a new atrial fibrillation. A CD head was performed for suspicion of a stroke. However, the findings showed multiple hypodense lesions all across the brain. An MRI scan of the brain showed these lesions to be ring enhancing with vasogenic edema. The lady had normal peripheral blood counts as well as normal inflammatory markers. HIV, syphilis and brucella serology was negative, as were autoimmune antibody tests. The lady had normal immunoglobulins. A CT chest, abdomen and pelvis revealed nothing of note. A lump puncture was performed which showed a mildly elevated opening pressure, mildly elevated protein, lymphocytosis, but it was clear with no bacterial growth. Gene expert of the cerebral spinal fluid was also negative. However, we started empirical treatment for tuberculous meningoencephalitis in view of the lady's ethnicity. Unfortunately, the lady deteriorated. By day three, she had clinical evidence of brainstem death and she passed away by day 11. Post-mortem examination revealed multiple hemorrhagic lesions all across the brain. Histopathological examination of these lesions showed multiple amoebic cysts in the perivascular space and blood vessel lumen. These samples were sent to the CDC in the USA who used real-time PCR and genotyping to make a positive diagnosis of Balamuthia mandrillaris. Amoebic encephalitis is a difficult diagnosis to make often requiring brain biopsy or post-mortem examination. Clinicians should have a low threshold of suspicion for this diagnosis in patients with brain lesions of unknown cause.